um, but also to kind of address some of the questions I've been getting consistently. And um, shoulders and wrists have been kind of a big thing um, for a lot of you. And I know sometimes I struggle with wrist pain, but I promise you when you do take care of some of those muscles in your forearms, um, it can help to decrease the pain that we have there. Additionally, um, adding in those weight-bearing exercises on your forearms and full arm will eventually um, strengthen our back and our shoulders, which will then in turn take some of that pressure off of your wrist, okay? So um, try not to shy away from doing them to the bit that you can, like whatever that point is where you can say, okay, this is enough that it's not like really hindering my day-to-day -day life afterwards, and it's enough that I'm, um, you know, kind of not recreating this huge flare-up. And then also, you know, I know um, one of my friends in here, Martika, had said in the app that her diet hadn't been perfect, and she's got some kind of autoimmune disease stuff that flares up. So also check what you're eating, make sure that that sugar intake is down, because anytime I eat sugar, I can always feel it in my joints. So if you're somebody who kind of has some of that arthritic um, stuff going on anyway, inflammation, sugar, lack of sleep, too much stress, all those things can lead to more inflammation in your body, but specifically in your joints. Like I'll feel it for sure in my hips and my knees and my wrists, um, even in my jaw. So today I wanted to address a few of those things by going over some foam rolling um, exercises and techniques as well as lacrosse balls and those of you who have been my client for any amount of time know that I love lacrosse balls. This is two lacrosse balls in a sock just tied okay and I like to give it a little room so sometimes I can space them out so that I can put them on either side of my glute, put them on either side of my shoulders when I put them in the back of my neck and they do a lot of that self myofascial release it's not in replacement of a massage. I still believe in massage therapy. Um, I still think you need somebody to get in there and really dig deep because these can't be like the pointy part of your thumb, but <clears throat> they are very helpful in between. So if you're getting a massage twice a month, once a week, once a month, this would be your in between and so would the um, foam rollers. So one thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the, the fascia, it's called the fascinator. It rolls out your fascia in your body. So, <coughs> excuse me, the fascial tissue, those connective tissues, that is kind of what binds our body together muscularly from head to toe, okay? When the fascia is tight, it creates adhesions or it makes it feel like, you know when you go to roll out your muscle and it feels like chunky, like you're rolling over like really something hard? Um, instead of it being supple and pliable like a muscle that just feels like, oh, that feels really good. And then you hit that one spot and you're like, oh my gosh, I call it a hot spot. When you hit that hot spot and you're like, we gotta breathe, okay? So when we're doing this foam rolling today, um, I know this isn't part of our scheduled programming, but I felt like I was getting enough questions about these issues that I wanna address them. And that's part of what we do, right? Not everything is just, boom, 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 let's hit these exercises, let's get a good sweat on. It's about adjusting my workouts and catering my workouts toward my audience. And those of you who are most active and those of you who are giving me feedback, this is for you. Now, <laughs> all this to say, this stuff is not always amazing, it doesn't always feel good, and foam rolling can be painful, okay? If you've ever had a deep tissue massage, maybe the first time you do it, it's like, oh my gosh, my neck feels like I got hit by a Mack truck last night. And then the next day you feel a little bit better and better. Your body will start to release easier. It starts to feel less intense every time you do it and the more consistent you are with it. So just like with cardiovascular training, if you do cardio once a month, it's gonna be hard, longer. If you do cardio more often or strength training more often, it's gonna be hard for less long. I mean, you're gonna be sore, but you're going to get better at it, right? Same with myofascial release and self um, uh, foam rolling, okay? The more you do it, and probably no more than like once a day, you don't wanna be rolling like three times a day or anything crazy like that, um, it will get easier. Your body will adapt to that sort of tension and then it will release. You're rolling on a muscle, it kind of feels like a hot spot. You breathe a few inhales and exhales and then it releases. 
okay? So I'm gonna start with the foam roller. I'm gonna show you a few things for the shoulder, uh, hips, glutes, and um, <clears throat> neck with the um, lacrosse balls. And you guys, I don't have any affiliate links for any of these things. You don't need them all. I would say start with one, be consistent with that one thing that you choose to purchase and go from there, okay? Lacrosse balls are relatively inexpensive, but um, you're a little bit more limited on what you can do. I would say if you were gonna pick one piece, go with a foam roller, like a big foam roller. You can do the half one, but there are some lying down lengthwise with it from my head to my bum that I'll show you that those would not be um, something you can do on a short one. So it's up to you. If you don't have the space, go for a short one. You can do most things on a short one. Um, and then the last but not least, I'll show you the so right. Um, the so as it's P S O A S. And so this is called the P S O dash R I T E. So right. This one, if you're sitting a lot and you have a lot of hip pain, the so right is really good to release your so as muscle. So I'll tell you about this one a little bit later. Um, my husband bought that a few years ago and I was like, why are you buying that stupid thing? Like, why do you need that? I teach Pilates, like we can just, you know, work the muscles and stretch them and they should do what they're supposed to do. But honestly, I use it anytime my back is bothering me, anytime my hips feel tight. If I do a leg workout, I for sure do that. And now that we both ride our Peloton, like every day of the week, we use that a ton to undo the tightness you might put in your hips. So all of these tools are things that I use prior to workouts, post workouts, post sitting all day, working on my website, etc. So um, let's start with the foam roller and we'll go from there. So first we're gonna address some uh, shoulders and neck and then we'll slide down to the hips and stuff. Okay, so I hope you guys find this valuable. Drop questions um, below the video and I can address them um, in the app for everybody. And then if it's something that's you know personal to you, feel free to text me. Um, send me an email or however you prefer to communicate and I will um, get back to you, okay? So starting with the back, I'm gonna take this off because I don't think that's gonna be very helpful. Um, okay, so when you're starting with your back, there's a lot of different ways you can foam roll, but for today, we're gonna start by holding our head and just kind of going up and down the spine, okay? So when our arms are here, we're supporting our head. We're not pulling on it but we're just not letting it droop back, okay? And you're just gonna roll. You can pick your bottom up, you're using your feet, and you're just kind of finding those spots. Yep, there's one. Oh, that's from sitting on the bleachers at wrestling all day yesterday. And then you can kind of roll to one side and just kind of come across those shoulder blades. So the difference between this roller and the Fashionator roller you cannot roll on your spine on that fashionator roller. Um, my friend, I'm interviewing her tomorrow on Monday, <clears throat> and um, she's like trained in that and trains people in it. And uh, so I'm interviewing her on my Instagram account. So if you guys have Instagram, maybe you can hop on and catch the replay if you're working tomorrow. Um, but I'm just gonna interview her on the benefits of it and stuff like that. Um, so I went up and down my spine. I found little hot spots. I kind of pushed to one side and then twisted and rolled to the other. It just puts a little bit of pressure on that side of my shoulder. But one of the main um, dysfunctions that we find is in our armpit. And what that does is when we're tight back here, it rolls our shoulder forward. So if you are one that sits a lot, it's important that you roll out your infraspinatus, but also your lat attachment. So I just like to hold my head, or you can do it from here or both. And you're just gonna find this spot that's right to the side of your chicken wing, so the side of your shoulder blade, and in that spot where like your back fat is, I guess. I mean, that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, and it doesn't feel great. Like you'll know when you're on it. And I like to roll back find that kind of hot spot, and then roll forward. Now, if you're really tight, you'll feel this quickly. 